A very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, I'll start by saying the uh, investment promotion department has already covered most of my technical details and presentation. So I will stick to what a minimum guidance uh, I could give to my colleagues from India of uh, being uh, a legal and tax advisor into this country for around three and a half years. So for me, you not belong to finer, for me you belong to India. And when I am helping you or when I am advising you, I am advising you from a perspective as to where Indian investments or where Indian investors stand vis-a-vis -vis in comparison to their counterparts like China, Japan, Korea. So uh, before I start on with that, I can give you a small introduction if, yeah. Uh, we are a 20-year-old law firm. We started our first operations in Laos in 1994. Then we went ahead to Cambodia and Myanmar in 1995. 2005 in Thailand, 2006 in Vietnam, 2010 in Singapore, and 2011 in Bangladesh and Indonesia. We currently have 12 offices in 8 countries. And our motto goes, go where, not where our clients go, but go before you go. So as I said, you will be going to Myanmar this week. We are already there in Nepido and in Yangon. So that is how we work. Uh, geographically, you can have a look as to uh, India and how well we are connected. We uh, are present in most of the Southeast Asian nations. And we provide legal and tax advice to most of these countries. That's me. Uh, I focus on the Indian investments into Laos. Cambodia, Myanmar, and most of the ASEAN countries. So now, uh, where does India and Laos comes into place? Our relationship goes back to 1956, when uh, the first relation between India and Laos was established. India and Lao PDR have various uh, bilateral agreements between them, because if you compare your uh, investments with China, Japan, Korea, Australia, most of these countries emphasize on the bilateral agreements what their country has entered into with India. So the major ones are, one is the Mekong Ganga cooperation. Then we have an ASEAN agreement, which I'll share. Companies, we started 151 million investments into the country. Some of the top brand names of India existing right now are Aditya Birla Group, Apollo Tires, Kirloskar, Tata Group, Exim Bank, Jaguar Overseas, HSMN, KEC, Angelic, and Vapcos. Now, currently, these are the three main agreements what India has already entered. One is a bilateral agreement, that is uh, Investment Promotion and Protection Agreement. The second is the ASEAN Free Trade Agreement in Goods. And the third is the agreement in Services and Investments. Now, why I say pending? because Indian cabinet approved it in December last year. It was scheduled to be signed in Bali on 8 December, but could not. It was scheduled to be signed by Thailand on 26th, 28th in Nepido in Myanmar, but our commerce minister could not go because of the <coughs> Jandhat Yojana and prime minister launching it. So we are still waiting for it to be signed. Once that is signed, then we stand at par with various other countries where we have a bilateral, uh, or you can say an agreement with ASEAN, where our investments and services are protected. When I say investments and services, it will also give benefit to our Indian, uh, what do you say, uh, 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 employees or Indian experts in chartered accountancy, medical, me as a lawyer, or any other profession. They'll be also getting certain benefits. So the third agreement is one of the most important agreement which all of us are really waiting for it to be signed. Uh, this has already been covered by the promotion department as to where does investment law sits. It is one of the prime law of law. It, suppose, uh, it provides various benefits to the Indian investors as well as the other, or I can say foreign investors. One of the important part is, uh, as a matter of deemed uh, benefit what you get is, you get an exemption of profit tax if you are putting that same net profit into the expansion of the company. So you are not paying a tax on it. Another thing which is already covered, you get uh, import duties exemption on 
any uh, raw material, equipment, spare parts, vehicles used for production. These have already been covered. So two, three main important which are beneficial to you. One, the ability to own office space. So uh, there, are, uh, there is a law in the country which provides an opportunity for the investor having a capital of certain amount. Once you have the capital of certain amount, you can apply to the government and request for an office space. I don't say land, I'm categorically saying office space, buildings. So basically you get land use rights. Then uh, the other part is protection of your intellectual property. Uh, often Indian investors come down and say we have uh, some uh, patented variety of crop, patented potato, or we have a patented trademark. So Laos is party to the TRIPS, the World Bank Trade uh, Related Intellectual Property System. And there you get intellectual property protection. And the last is ability to select various forms of dispute resolution. So uh, as a lawyer, I have to advise you that if you end up in a dispute, then Lao recognizes foreign arbitration. So you can settle your disputes in Singapore, Hong Kong, London, that's per, as per your discretion, and they will recognize the foreign award by such arbitration panel. So they are party to the New York Convention. Uh, I, I've been, uh, this has again been discussed uh, with our promotion uh, department's presentation. Uh, one, the most important part which I always emphasize is its strategic location. As I was discussing with the colleagues yesterday that bordering with five countries, Laos can actually act as a manufacturing hub to any production base. You import your machinery from China at the least possible import duty or even zero and export your products to the four countries at zero rate because most of them will have a bilateral agreement or once the ASEAN economic community opens up, you'll have a free trade zone. So what you are doing is you are doing business at zero tax rate. So that is one of the uh, biggest uh, advantage. Uh, I, I know I have always got certain uh, restrictions to it saying the price of the logistic is expensive. My answer to that is no country in this world is a heaven. You have your risk and challenges in each country, each jurisdiction. There are risks in each country. So you have to calculate your risk. You have to take, do your calculations and participate. So in my opinion, you are sitting in one of the best strategic locations per se in ASEAN with cheap labor and all the other benefits, less population, big areas. So it's easier to manage for you as well. Uh, this is the investment promotion uh, agreement what has been bilaterally signed by India. Few uh, quick uh, benefits what you get is equitable treat, uh, ensure that the Indian investments are uh, treated fair and equitable. You, India has got an MFN status. If uh, MFN means most favorable nation status. So technically you will be getting all benefits that are accorded to any other state or domestic investor. So technically you are par with all other investors and if you can negotiate with the government directly on a one-to-one -one basis, you may be getting something more. Uh, this is again uh, some benefits given to you that the Indian investor's property cannot be nationalized, you are protected from war, you are protected from any other crimes and if a property is being nationalized due to certain emergency, then obviously you will be provided uh, fair and equitable compensation to it. That is what the Indian government has guaranteed for you. Uh, why I am highlighting this to you is whenever our uh, whenever competitors for Indian businessmen arrive in these countries, their first step is what protection my country gives to me. So that I am telling you that India has signed a bilateral agreement. It gives you certain protection which you can consider before investing or even after investing, you can think of what benefits you can uh, take out of these uh, agreements. One thing we are lacking uh, is we don't have a bilateral tax treaty with India. So we uh, lastly, we heard that India is in negotiations with uh, Laopedia on a bilateral tax treaty. But when it f formalizes, it's, it's still to be, it's hard to decide. But yes, that is one way where we lack. So we have to be uh, a little conscious as to when we are investing, we are discussing with our uh, counterparts, with the government agencies, 
as to what benefits we can get as a tax country. So that's all from my side. As again, I would say uh, I, I, uh, that it, it's not a, uh, I would not give a picture that you are entering into a heaven and you will have a fantastic smooth road. It's like any other country where you're investing. It has its own positives. Vis-a-vis, -vis, if you compare ASEAN, you are sitting in one of the most strategic locations and there are several benefits what a one-to-one -one investor can achieve from the government due to their open door policy and they are more approachable. So I'm, I'm open to questions after the session gets over. So thank you very much and thanks for your patience and listening to me. Thank you.